Hi, it's uh, Kurt Keating at Fluke Corporation, Sales Application Manager for the Northeast. Uh, today, uh, we're going to introduce you to the Fluke 1537 2500 volt insulation tester. This is a multifunction unit that has the ability to do low resistance, high resistance. It is an AC DC voltmeter and can document the results. So, taking a look, uh, closer look at the 1537 insulation tester from Fluke, uh, you'll notice a nice bright display. Uh, obviously, different test functions within the instrument. We do give you three terminals. We give you a hot, a ground, and what's called a, a, a ground common connection. Uh, that would be a third terminal if you're testing in a high highly noisy environment, like a substation, for example. Uh, this can shun away any of the uh, voltage that's traveling across the top of the conductor. Looking at the display for the moment, uh, I have both a digital readout as well as an analog bar graph and uh, the ability to be able to change my voltage starting at 250 volts to 500, 1000, 2500, and then back down to 250. So the idea is twice the operating voltage, so a 250 volt test would be done on a 120 volt device, a 500 volt test would be done on a 240 volt device, so forth and so on. Tall tests should run for at least one minute, so this does lock the output it will display both the voltage that it's outputting as well as the resistance value for testing purposes today. I'm going to take a fluke voltmeter that's hooked up to the output of this, flip it to DC voltage, and we'll start out with a test and I'll bring that up to 500 volts. So again, this should run for a full 60 seconds. There is an actual timer on the display and you'll see that happen as I hit the test button. The test button will light up and in the bottom corner we have a, a counter started in, uh, in terms of time. Why am I using a multimeter? Well, it's an easy way to illustrate the capabilities because uh, all fluke multimeters, most multimeters, have a 10 mega ohm input impedance. So this is going to act like a 10, ohm, 10 uh, mega ohm resistor. At the top of the display, you'll see the uh, voltage range we selected, which is 500, and the actual voltage output. So this is considered a true megometer. It measures its own outputs, and it's obviously within a few volts of what the uh, fluke meter is showing over here. Again, we would let this run for a full 60 seconds, and at the end of that test, we're going to allow it to stop and save the results. So we'll, uh, we'll give that a minute to run through. While we're looking at that, uh, some of the other functions we can do, we're an AC-DC voltmeter. Uh, we are good up to uh, 1,000 volts. Uh, we are an ohmmeter for low resistance measurements, and we have the ability of doing a variety of other types of measurements, which I'll show you here in just a second. So it's running through the test. We've come to 60 seconds. I'm going to hit the stop button right now. The beauty of this is it now will ask me if I want to save uh, with a uh, question mark behind it. The actual reading is being held on the display. The leakage current, which right now is showing 53 microamps, that's extremely low, is all there. If I'd like to save it, all we do is we hit enter. And when we hit enter down in the bottom corner, it gives me the ability to change and name it with four alphanumeric characters. So starting out with zero, I can uh, increment that up to any number I want, and then use the next arrow key and actually give it some form of uh, nomenclature in terms of a, uh, both a, either a, a number or a letter, or however you want to name it. The idea behind that is we can identify the name of the device that we just tested. Once I've done with that, we would hit save. That is now saved in the instrument itself. So the other functions that we have in the meter is the ability to be able to be a AC-DC voltmeter. Uh, and again, uh, auto-ranging. Uh, so there's volts AC, there's volts DC, and then we go to ohms. So why would I need low resistance measurement in an insulation tester? Well, insulation typically is tested from each phase to ground. So in a motor, I'd be testing A to ground, B to ground, C to ground. But the actual resistance between the windings from phase A to B, B to C, C to A would be a very low resistance measurement. And we can read all the way down to a single digit or an ohm to verify the low resistance measurement on the windings. And then we would do the high resistance measurement from each phase to ground as well. So this really re requires doing six tests if you think about it. The other functions that we do, come back, we do what's called a DAR. That's a dielectric absorption measurement. Uh, this is where we can give you a ratio. So rather than just uh, having a reading, uh, it will actually take a reading at 30 seconds, again at one minute, and divide the 30 second reading into the one minute reading and give me a ratio. Typically a DAR ratio of 1.2 or above tells me it's good. So I don't need to really in that case know what the reading is, just that the ratio is above the acceptable limit. The other is called a P to I. P to I is polarization index. That is a 10 minute long reading. 
So the instrument will take a reading at a one minute mark, store that, take it again at a 10 minute mark, and store that, and divide the 10 minute reading by the one minute reading, and again, we'll get a ratio of 1.2 or above, which will tell me that the insulation is good. Typically, we'd run that type of test when you have a very large scale motor, a large transformer, and you have a lot of capacitance, all those windings, and it might take it a while for it to get up to the readings. So you might be into the sixth or seventh minute and the resistance value is still climbing. As you can see on the device itself, on the uh, 500 volt range, we read up to uh, 500 gig ohm, but if we go to higher ranges, we're gonna read up into the tera ohm range. So this gives me the ability to actually get a reading on a very large scale device like a transformer motor and have a very accurate measurement at the end. So once we've stored all these results, how do we get the data out of the box? So we supply with USB cable, it downloads to a template. The template actually allows you to see the, uh, the name of the device that we had, the final reading, the voltage range, the uh, leakage current, the capacitance on the line, and it puts that into an Excel spreadsheet template, uh, which is uh, very easily to be able to be used and analyzed. And if you think about it, Excel will allow me to graph things so I can graph the results over time.